Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Adobe Fonts Show, episode 45, Hello. if I have that yes. correctly. <laughs> welcome all. Yes, welcome all. How are you, Ari? I'm doing well. How are you, Ben? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. You're wearing a t-shirt. I am. Is it warm? I'm wearing my I Heart Clouds t-shirt. Um, it yes. is very warm. It is 80 degrees here in Brooklyn, New York which uh, came on real fast. We were like doing the dance around 60 in the day and 30 at night. And then all of a sudden we have 80 degrees today. So yeah, here we are. I'm That's a t-shirt, no crazy, hoodie. Crazy. I'm feeling summertime coming on real quick. Yeah, I'm still in a sweater. So still the early spring weather yeah. in the Bay Area. I think we're hoodie and... weather in a few days again. So I'll be back. <laughs> the hoodie will be back. Yes, it will. Hi to everyone in the chat. We have a few of our friends. Uma Korn, Wade is moderating. Thank you. Yes, thanks. We have Jack, Robert. Welcome. Let us know what the temperature is, Celsius or Fahrenheit. Wherever you wherever are. Wherever you are. And let us know where you are. <laughs> yes, let us know where you are. Um, I'll say hi. To those of you that haven't met me yet, I'm Ari, the library manager for Adobe Fonts. My team works with all the Foundry partners that add fonts to our library, and those fonts are included in your Creative Cloud subscription. We currently have over 150 partners, and we consistently add fonts to expand that library. Yes, and I'm Ben. I'm a content producer and uh, started out in support for Adobe Fonts, even before it was called Adobe Fonts, answering all kind of font related questions. And now I do things like this and other content to help you get the most out of fonts when you're using Creative Cloud. Yeah. And if you haven't used our service yet, Adobe Fonts is a library of over 20,000 fonts that you can use with your Creative Cloud subscription, and they can be used for personal and commercial projects. And if you aren't sure where to start, go to fonts.adobe.com and activate a few fonts. Um, and here on the show, we talk about all things fonts and we have great workshops with professionals in the type world. You can look at all past episodes and subscribe to Adobe Live on YouTube to get updated on those. And we also have Adobe Fonts on Behance. So definitely subscribe. Ben, how many subscribers do we have? on our Behance page. I'm going to find out right now. We, we need to get these numbers up. We do. It, we surpassed a thousand. Um, I'm checking we right wanna now. We want to get We're more gonna, people. We have a thousand sixty seven currently. Woohoo! So, so those of you that are watching, if you haven't um, subscribed to our Behance page, Please do. You can find so many previous videos. Yes. And a lot over of the, 40. We have a lot of interviews so. on there and those basically are pretty evergreen because we just talk to the type designers and creators about what they're doing and their work and their process. And then we usually cover topics that are pretty, sometimes we'll feature new features that are on Adobe fonts, but a lot of times we'll talk about broader subjects that really you can go revisit at any time. Yeah. So check it out. Um, we have a few pretty high temperatures and then low temperatures. It's very mixed. It's Roberts in Ottawa, Canada, able to walk around in shorts and a tee. Wow. That's what it feels like here. That's great. <laughs> All right. Fabio and Gareth are following. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And Josie joined. Hi, Josie. So we have a survey. Wow. That was perfect timing. Yeah. I could sense that was the moment. <laughs> I think we were on the same. We were in sync there. So what's the survey, Ben? Okay, so uh, we usually do an audience poll, but we wanted to have something slightly more formal to get to know our audience a little bit better. So this survey will be up for about a month, so we'll have it up now and we'll mention it on our next episode as well. And then we'll take it down. Um, and then I believe Wade has the link for this and can post it in the chat. But basically this is about five or six questions. Won't take very long, probably under three minutes to fill it out. Um, and it'll just tell us a little bit about you and you it doesn't even require that you give us your information there's a there's a question at the end that asks if you'd like to participate in future font research 
and user research related to fonts. And if you decide to do that, then you can give us our, your name and email. Otherwise, it doesn't gather that information and you can just fill it out and just give us a sense of where you're at with fonts, what your work is like, and those kinds of things. It'll help us make the show better, but also it'll help the Adobe Fonts team kind of understand what the audience for fonts is, who they are. And so it'll be good. Yeah. yeah. And we're always trying to talk to customers about new features and what their feedback is. So we have that user voice page that we always talk about, but this is a little more um, specific about you, the audience that watches these shows, yeah. because we know that your fonts lovers or font curious or something in between. Um, and we want to get your information and maybe work with you more to talk in more depth about what you'd like to see. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. All right. Shall we dive into uh, today's topic? Yes. Okay. So we are revisiting the Practicing Typography Basics course, which is free and available at adobe.com. And I believe Wade has the link for that as well. And we're doing part four, which is called How Typography Feels. And we're going to dive right in. We're going to watch the video, which is about four minutes, 30 seconds. And then we're going to go through the lesson and maybe discuss some of the ideas that are in the video. Um, and yeah, just kind of see where that goes. So we're kind of doing this lesson for the first time here live. So we're going to kind of discover it with you all if you want to. Uh, if you go to that lesson, you can follow along, download the lesson file and do it with us. Or you can just do that at any time in the future when you feel like it. Um, anything before we start the video? I'm blind reacting. Okay, we're going to blind Good react. Idea. Here we go. It's not like I helped make this and have seen this <laughs> like a hundred times or anything like that. I swear, <laughs> this is a purely fresh reaction. Okay, here we go. Typographic choices evoke feelings. In this lesson, I'll explain how to develop your understanding of how that works. You can have typography that's doing its jobs very well, like making text easy to read, catching people's attention, and guiding them through information. And you might even have picked out fonts that look great. But there's something about the design that doesn't feel quite right. And you don't know exactly why. That's totally normal. And what you have to do in this situation is to practice describing things. A big part of doing a better job with any kind of design is looking at what's around you looking for good examples. And not only that, trying to understand what makes them feel good to you and learning how other people feel about them. You can know a lot about typography in terms of what works and what's good. And there is such a thing as objectively good when you're talking about balance and text blocks and volumes of space. If you practice enough, you can tell that some things feel good and some don't. But in terms of conveying the feeling that you want, finding a good solution that's also appropriate for your project. That takes more finesse, and it's not objective, it's subjective, and everybody's different. The exercise that helps most here is about understanding yourself and understanding others. It's a very simple exercise. Find an example of typography and write down how it feels. Then take a stab at explaining why it feels that way. All you need to do is capture a screenshot or a photo and scribble notes. Anything visual with text, whether it's something you've seen online or something in the physical world, capture that. Critique it. Think to yourself, does this feel good or doesn't it? Which parts of it feel good and which don't? Use adjectives to describe how you feel. Get a thesaurus. Being able to articulate your feelings and your observations about how things look, that gives you a huge boost. You can use emoji to describe your feelings. Icons are great for representing emotions. Or you can do this with pictures. Sometimes the things that we see remind us of other things, and we don't always know exactly why. Put pictures together. This stuff helps with your communication skills and your ability to sell your work. Whether you're doing business or trying to convince someone else about a creative direction, or just deepening your own practice. It's especially helpful to find examples of subject matter that are similar to what you're working on. So let's say you're making a website for your small business. Look at other small business websites. Look at your competition. Write down how those things feel. Use words or icons or whatever and describe those feelings. 
You can use those descriptive thoughts to find your own direction. It can even lead you to typography that evokes the same feelings. Look to communities that showcase great examples of design, like Behance, Fonts in Use, I Love Typography, or the Letterform Archive. See if other people have shared thoughts about a project's typography and how they think it feels. Another great thing to do, listen to type designers, the people who make fonts. They're extremely sensitive to the basics, and they often have sophisticated ways of describing what they see. So whether you're putting words to your own thoughts or noting someone else's opinion, save that feeling, develop this habit, and then reference your notes as you work. For practice, try recreating something. Our example project has a few ways to get started, so check that out. Exploring fonts, looking at design, reading critique from your peers, these are well worth your time. Keeping notes will remind you of that, and recreating what you see will help you understand your feelings. It's one of the best things you can do. Nice. Cool. Very cool. It sounds almost therapeutic, you know? It's very introspective. Yeah. I, feel... I put it in the chat because he said, like, you need to understand yourself. Yeah. And I was like, Whoa. whoa. I need to understand myself. Yeah. Before I understand the thought. And when he was talking about taking notes, it sounded very much like journaling. And then also, I think it's like about cultivating taste, you know, and like figuring yeah. out why your taste is the way like, so you know, you like something versus something <gasps> else. But why? Why do you I like was something? trying to show my favorite, your favorite selection, <laughs> but it, it um, had a hiccup, hiccup. So um, while we were watching the video, I'm like, how many fonts have I favorited? But it's still loading. Um, I think, like we said, finding out how you why you feel a certain way and understanding yourself, what it is about your influences or your style that informs what fonts you like in your design. And then also having reference points, like Tim said, looking at things like fonts in use mm -hmm. or Behance, going and finding examples so that when you need to pinpoint the style you want, you can visually look through and say, oh yeah, that's what I liked. And I feel like some of those, some of the projects on Behance and some of the, the kind of posts on those other sites, I love typography, there'll be a description as to like what the person was trying to do or what it evokes for the reader, the person who's writing about it or those that, you know, sometimes you'll see that on Behance, they'll kind of describe what they were trying to do, what the client liked mm -hmm. or didn't like, maybe previous versions of the font, things like that. And I think it's, it's realizing that there's no, because it's subjective, there's no right or wrong answer. And so picking something can seem a little bit daunting, at least for me, because I'm like, am I doing something dumb? Or is this great? I, I can't yeah. I can't tell. And I think And they might also use vocabulary. Yeah. Like you'll see an image you like and then they'll say, This is art deco style. Yeah. Or something. This is what the client wanted. And you're like, Oh, that's why I like this. And I should look up art deco style and look up what fonts to use and stuff like that. Yeah, and like starting to feel comfortable with your own taste and leaning into what you like, regardless of everything else like there's you know like he said there's a couple uh best practices that like you don't want to use a display type really tightly packed in a paragraph uh you know as body text but mm -hmm. in terms of like which display text you want to use go with whatever your heart tells you that's my advice yeah so i'm gonna Click on open an illustrator so we can open the practice file. Yes. And if anyone wants to follow along the link, Wade posted it just above in the mm -hmm. chat a little bit. If you want to follow along with us as we go through these exercises. You can just watch my internet. Open the illustrator installer. 
What? I already have Illustrator installed. It's right here. Yeah, you have it open. Mm, I'm gonna try again. No. Oh. Oh, it worked. <laughs> magic, like magic. Um. Okay, there we go. It's working. Nice. I had to, I have been signing in and out of my account. So I think there was a little issue there. Okay, so here, as we've seen before in the previous tutorials, it has some information and it guides you through every single step, which is great. Mm -hmm. So um, it says you might have missing fonts, didn't have them because they auto activated, which is great. So we're starting our type layout. So we'll start by creating a design for a flyer. Click to select any content on the artboard labeled working design. Okay. To the left, you'll find unformatted text elements you can use, headline, subhead, body text, and an optional design element that ties back to the artwork, which is this flower. Nice. And then you drag each text element to the artboard. Now you can arrange them in a way that looks good to you. So this arrangement part, we went over in the second lesson, yes, right? We did. So we had that range thing. That might have been the third. Well, what which... we've, we've done so far, we've done body text, we've done display text, and we've done arrangement. Yes. So this was the arrangement file that yeah. I still have from that stream. Um, just to remind everybody, we took the same text and we arranged it in different ways to see what would work. Um, so that helps us to start out with this whole project. And in this case, we get to choose so, fonts if we want. I wonder if that there will be anything about that in the directions. Yes. So for now, we're just arranging. And I guess... There's thumbnails that show us the different examples of how this could possibly be arranged. So keeping in mind the really important elements, size, placement, relationship yeah. with each other. Um, so these are cool to see all the different ways that you could arrange these. And another thing is you can kind of look at these different examples and ask, how does, how does each of these make you feel um, if you mm -hmm. want to, right, of those three examples that are in there. Why do you like one versus the other? That kind of stuff. So I'm just gonna pull these over. Okay, so that's the paragraph yeah. and then. Okay. Is that the subhead? So no, okay. This is the subhead, this is the text and then this is the link. So of course, this has to be big. Um, should I do something completely different from the yeah. examples? Yeah, let's just experiment. Let me just a make this a little, maybe it needs to be a little smaller so we can see everything. Yeah. Let me just make sure. Okay, I can move this over here. Okay. So we'll experiment a little bit. Stay covered. Okay, maybe that's why there's umbrellas. Ah. I think I'm getting it. Cover yourself from the rain nice. Makes around sense. you. Or the sun. Or the sun. Just... Sometimes the sun can be too bright. And you need a little parasol. I don't yet own a parasol myself, but I've heard that they're very <laughs> useful. Okay. Let's see. So we're also thinking of all the elements that are the most important. What's the most important thing? Is it the title? Is it the website? And I was also um, thinking, um, so this is about mental health, like a, a webinar about 
you know, reducing stress and things like that. So it makes mm -hmm. me think that the layout should be kind of zen or kind mm. of calm as opposed yeah. to wacky. So a lot of white space, like yeah, space between to let everything breathe. Yeah. As they say. As they say. Okay. I'm thinking we what could. Do you we, think? we could make the subhead text size a little larger mm -hmm. than the body. Let me see what size this is. This is 12 point. So maybe we can do start with 16. Oh. Is it too big? Uh. That's good. I think. Yes. Yeah, that's good. Oh, I'm itching to change these fonts. Who's with me? Yeah. I was going to say that. Like, I'm glad you brought oh, it up. Oh, we need something else in here. But I appreciate the steps that are needed just to get your placement right and figure out how you're going to do it before. Um, let me just see what's in the steps here because I know each step is very clearly laid out. So we drag each element. And then with our text in place, we can bring it to life. Okay. I'm going to start bringing it to life. And then if we need to move something, we can. Just because we don't want to take too much time. So select the Stay Covered logo. And then change the font style and size using the techniques we've learned. While body text can be low key, display type like our logo should be in front getting attention. Okay, so this is the logo. I was thinking it was like a, a message. Yeah. But it's actually the name of it's the staycovered.co organization. Yeah. Mm. Which is not a real website, by the way, I checked. <laughs> Um, so that does make a difference that maybe it should be a little more decorative or interesting. Yeah. I don't know. Or like tightly spaced, something that's more of a logo than just a heading. Um, while body text can be low key, blah, blah, blah. I just read that. Go bold in your choices. You'll soon find one that fits the project's tone. Yes, we know that fonts have personalities for sure. Okay, so now we select this and start changing things. Um, so this is another layout that is shown as an example. Do I like it more than, yeah. I feel like- I like ours okay. If ours was moved down a tiny bit and this flower is a little smaller. I like ours. That's nice. So I think I'm going to use that. And then let's see. I just want to see what else is here. So there's other examples as well. So for now, I'm just going to go here and start looking at different fonts. So we're trying to find something that is calming, bold. Catches some um, attention, but isn't like- Eye-catching. Isn't like wacky. Right. Yeah. So one of the things we could do is go to the Adobe Fonts website and use all of the resources we have there to discover new fonts. So we could do that. Um, and in the meantime, I'll show you what you can do within Illustrator. So we've shown this before, but the whole Adobe Fonts library is available in Illustrator. And all you have to do is click on Find More. And then as it says, it's initializing, which means it's bringing in all those fonts. And now it loaded. So we currently have over 25,000 fonts in the library. We just surpassed 25,000 last month. Yeah. It's official. So 25,000 It's official. Fonts. So what we can do here is look at all 25,000, which is kind of overwhelming. 
Um, you do have filters which allow you to narrow down by classification, by properties. So this can help us a little bit. We can say, okay, we know we want something bold because we want it to be eye-catching. And we know that we probably, I want to look at decorative stuff to see like see, how wacky can we get. See what comes up, yeah. Um, and then I do want it to have lowercase and uppercase. I think that it will go with the whole theme of wellness and calm if it's not all like uppercase yelling at you. Yeah. So I'm going to say it has lowercase and uppercase. And it's bold we can and it start has, with that. It's decorative. Yeah. So then I can preview all of these straight on my canvas, which is the benefit of browsing through Illustrator. So you can just start. You can get looking. a sense, yeah, right away. Yeah. And say, like, okay, this is definitely not. Ooh, I want to what see Vera want. Stout again. Oh. Okay, never mind. Yeah, I think it's a little too quirky, but it's getting there. Yes. So this is where we think about our feelings. We understand ourselves. We do the introspection, Maybe. but also we go to something like Behance and we say, are there examples that we want to pull from? So I can do that actually. Yeah, let's go to Behance and see if there's like anything like, like meditate, like a massage. Loading massage or meditation um, or something you know candles maybe or gosh this thing is annoying me because my favorites loaded on my other screen but they didn't load there okay so did you say candle i was saying like candles or like uh massage therapy or yeah you know to give us like a sense of something calm or See. meditative or massage therapy let us know if you have any ideas of how to look for inspiration for this kind of brand so it's a mental health wellness brand i think one of the first things i'm noticing is the colors are very different yeah they're darker um, more subdued. like our I colors think. are ours are very bright at least in that illustration. Yeah, very bright. Maybe. Mental health. Although I have seen a lot of mental health brands, for example, Headspace, that have bright colors like the bright orange. So That's you true. could go that route. Oh, yeah, look at this. Um, emotion tracker. It is a more playful route that you could go. Definitely, yeah, it's funny, just massage therapy versus mental health, <laughs> completely different color schemes. Yeah. Okay, so totally, like candles, Massage therapy, it's all beige. This has some earth tones, but it's a lot of earth tones. And then we have mental health apps. Very playful. Bright. This one's more muted, but still. Playful illustrations, but kind of clean, clean design. Yeah. Yeah. Conquering mental illness with a smile. This is very bright. Very colorful. This is a mental health. Uh, Josie yeah. asked, if I use free fonts for a client's food label, should I make sure that I have a license to use it commercially? I'm fairly new to graphic design. So generally, if you have a Creative Cloud subscription and you use an Adobe font for your client's food label, that is totally allowed. If it's from the Adobe font service, all fonts can be used commercially. Yes. 
regardless of what they are if, every single font if it's a free font that was found somewhere else you do want to make sure that that is either an open source font or is available for commercial licensing for free uh, before you would use it for a client's project so most of the time you would pay for a license if it's from an open source library like google fonts or if you get fonts from our library with your creative cloud subscription you'll be okay Mm -hmm. yeah. I like this one. I do too. It's, cool. it's colorful. It's fun. I like the let some steam off. Mm -hmm. I like the type. It's good. I would say that the, the sands that's used for the text is a little rigid compared, but it does share the narrow width. Yes. So it does pair that way, but I feel like it could be cool to find a rounded font like aptly. I was just looking at this recently. So this one has that narrow width, but it's, it's rounded. pretty simple and it's rounded. So I would totally substitute that one. It also reminds me, this. yeah, of the, it reminds me of the letters like reach out, how they're a little rounded. It reminds mm -hmm. me of that. Yeah, I think it would like, it would look great with that. Nice. Not to criticize this great design, just to point out something. No, we're just taking inspiration, but we're also working on something different. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So these colors are very close to what we're working with. Um, and it has a very, bold and decorative font that they're using. I think we're going to get rid of these, even though I really like all these designs. It doesn't really go with what we're doing. Um, we got on a good track searching for mental health. And I think we're, we're trying to just be a little bit more playful with it rather than zen to match the colors, to match what's already out there yeah. and that means that we can be more bold um and i think this the... one i also like the revive logo oh yeah that's nice very friendly and a little bit fun it kind of combines the zen and the friendly so that's why i like it if i'm introspective about i feel like myself. there's a fun sans serif from Joanna from Novatype. Mm -hmm. Shall I search Novatype? Yes, let's see. So when you're searching, always Laka. go to the um, either, and you're searching for a foundry, it's going to show you all the results that might show that word. So click on foundries, or you can also, if you're in the all mode, you can go down and click on the foundry name. Just a tip because sometimes um, we get feedback like I searched and it didn't come up. Okay, so here's Novatype. It's Laka. So, Laka. That was the one I was. Oh, thinking. this is Laka Tech. Sorry, did you mean this one? Yeah, Laka. Oh, and it has those. Those kind of fun little little yeah layout things it does. Yes. Um. What was the cover? Stay covered. Stay covered. Okay. And then it has the heavier weight. It has the italic, which is cool. Very friendly. And could be a little bit playful. And look at when you scroll down, you can see what templates and express that this font is used in. So we can get ideas too of what it was used for and how it was used. And seeing, yeah, seeing it in different Meditation. contexts. Yeah. So this can also influence how you feel about a font or these are templates that you can then just open and express and then you can save that as your inspiration as well in your little notes of what fonts you like. Okay, so that's a good one. I can, and then also we can try it out uppercase as well and see what happens. I'm just gonna do the black weights. Um, I'll activate 
some errors occurring. Oh, I'm not signed in. There's something with my sign in today, but I'll just find this in Illustrator um, because we don't have that much time. So we looked through Behance. We looked at stuff we like. We kind of took um, notes of what it was kind of making us feel and how we felt about it. Yeah, which if I was doing this and I had more time and I could spend time writing notes or saving some of those images and putting them into my artboard, that's what I would do. Um, but in the interest of time, we can go back to Illustrator and think about all the things that we saw and all these bright colors, making this more friendly, approachable, bold. Um, so I guess I'm we're changing some of the adjectives we were using before it was like calm. I think though. And now it's more like with friendly. The, with the calm, we were kind of thinking more about the layout of the text and keeping it kind of clean. And mm -hmm. then I think now that we're dealing with the logo, it's like, oh, what do we want the brand to represent? So the layout's calm, but the brand can be fun or bold or, you know, attention catching or anything like that. So, right. Yeah. All right. So with that in mind, oh, wow. Look at this one. Kind of like it. That's pretty bold. This is new. I've never used it before. I like it. I like it. It doesn't really go with the illustration. I feel like the illustration is a little bit more um, kind of clean. Has kind of fine lines. Kind of geometric, and fine line, and yeah. Um, and we can keep the bold, um, the bold filter on because I definitely want something bold. Um, and then we're looking through seeing things that might work with that friendly tone. And as I said, you can just preview them straight on the canvas, which is great. Some of them are going to need to be resized. Um, this one mm, too, too tame. Yeah, not friendly enough. It doesn't make me feel covered. No. <laughs> uh. um, let's see. Does anyone like scrolling through their whole font menu? I mean, this is even more than their whole font menu. This is the entire library. <laughs> the whole font menu of the whole library of yeah. 25,000 fonts. Um, if I also, let's see, sorry, if I search, search for Laka. So I'm not going to put you through all that misery. I searched for Laka, which we saw on the website. It's loading. Um, we wanted black. So I'm going to activate that using the cloud icon. And the italic one. And then we can use that one. And then I'll also do more filters so I can keep searching around. Um, I'll do sans. Remove that search. Hmm, it's not removing the search for Laka. There it goes. Okay, there we go. There we go. Hi, X height. Try that. Okay. So sans, that's bold. Let's go through a little more. I'm going to go past the A's. I'm going to have to stay in the A's. We're being forced to choose from A's or B's. <laughs> and um, the easiest way 
really is to browse on the website when you when you don't know like exactly what you're looking for and you want to have different ways to narrow it down so you can use tags and something I would do is um, I can just bring over another window because the window I was trying to sign in on this screen wasn't working. I'm just going to make sure this works. Um, this is my favorites, by the way, that I was trying to load earlier. So just to show you, like, you can go to your favorites under manage fonts here on the right. And then you can go by date favorited so that you can find like, what did I favorite a long time ago or name. So it's pretty cool. And you can collect fonts this way. Um, so if I go back to the all fonts page, okay, I'm still signed in. Um, and then I go to friendly, which is one of the vibes we were looking for. Um, we can start filtering and then we can do our bold weight as we did before. And then we can do put in our text. Robert says, I can recall scenarios <laughs> where I would have received just pick one by now. Is that from a client, Robert, or a manager, or who was? Who was pressuring you and not letting you? Yeah, not letting you font browse and not letting you look through twenty five thousand fonts. Yeah, you have to you have to vet and look at every single one in context. You know, all twenty five thousand. This one's really good, Ben. Oh, I like it a lot. Jellica yeah. or Gilika. I'm gonna go with Jellica. Like Angelica. Yeah. But not Anne. Yeah, without the sans, so sans Anne. Jellica, Laka, everything Ka. Sans Anne, not Sans Serif. Ah, oh, Sans Anne. <laughs> oh, Serenia. I like these um, rounded, rounded serifs, ones. Yeah, me too. Speaking of rounded, we have a rounded tag. So maybe I'm just gravitating towards that. Something like Margot is also great. Olivita, this is great. I'm going to go to that family. <laughs> Robert says, it's the boss. Ah, oh, a boss who's limiting you spending hours looking through the fonts. How dare they? I know. Okay. I think we have a few that we could use. Yeah, I think so. It's it's getting towards the playful, but Robert is reminding me I can't spend all day doing this. So um, we had Lake Lake. Didn't work. They're all um, I guess it didn't activate. Today is my day of having technical issues. It's bound to happen. Okay, there, it, there is. it is. <laughs> okay, so we have the upright and the italic. I do like the italic. Okay, I'm going to just have multiple versions of this. And put them here. I'm wondering what this looks like with the uppercase with that kind of, I think it's an open type feature where the, all the letters kind of, you know, move out of each other's way. I don't know what that's called. <laughs> They are ligatures, I believe, and it's in the uppercase. So if we make this just a little smaller, and then we look at the alternates for this font. I think if, um, if we um, if we go to the open type features, I think you can just select. Yes, oh, this tutorial thing is blocking, blocking me. too much screen space. It's blocking me. Okay. 
So I don't have this text box selected. There we go. Okay, so if I open up the glyph panel, I can also see all of the different letters. Right. So I can see all of the alternates to each letter, which is cool. It also supports Greek. Very impressed. Very cool. I am Greek, so I have to be impressed with that. Um, so you can see that some of them have these swashes. So for example, if I do the C, okay, I'm blanking on what I'm supposed to do. I think, Where are let's try, <laughs> let's try the open type panel and see what we find. Where here. are these alternates? Where is the open type panel? Um, How come it window, doesn't show up? Window and then. It's usually just there. So I'm. Type open type. Whoops. It's usually. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> you know what's been happening this whole time? It's been opening on another screen and I'm like, I swear. Okay. Okay, we're so here. Now let's try. We're those, here, everyone. Those... Select the whole box and then click around in there and see what happens. Selection tool. Whoops. Can't even use. Okay. Okay. These are the discretionary ligatures. These are the standard ligatures, which is already selected. These are the contextual alternates it's selected. I think it's specific, very specific letter pairings that yeah. we don't have the right ones in here. To make it look cool. Also, I believe that if it's upright, these will work better. I think that's like a little better looking. Now, if we, but make, if we make this lowercase or, you know, just regular title case. I'm wondering what will happen. If it's not all uppercase? Yeah. Okay, so those are all uppercase ligatures. Okay. So those discretionary ligatures are just for the uppercase. Yes, they are. Noted. I believe so, because this is selected. So, yeah. So I think that there are certain combinations that would work and it's our specific text our stay covered you know, letters we are, don't have the right text we don't have the right text um okay so i just realized i can move the tutorial thing out so we can see this better okay so we don't have that much time let's look at the other fonts that we um we were looking at so I'm going to select this one and go to Angelica, not Angelica. I like it already. <laughs> yeah, you would like it. And then let's see. Can I see recently added? Uh, was one called Octava or something? Olivida. Olivida. Yes. Thank you. Let me just search it. Olivita. I don't know why I pronounce everything like that. Olivita. Um, did I ever activate I it? Actually, oh, I didn't. I just went to the page and was like, oh, I like this. Okay, so that was Olivita. Go back. I never did it. Okay, so now we have it active. And then the other one was decoy. Oh, fun. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these are a lot more expressive. I think that I'm preferring 
them. Let's see, are these all, let's make this smaller to be similar size. So, I do like very that. nice. A lot. Very nice. Olivita. Um, we would have to make this a lot smaller. It depends on what the text typeface is. Um, I'm not really feeling it. What are you feeling with Olivita, Ben? I'm I'm still leaning towards Jellica, personally. Mm -hmm. So now that and this now, one now is that Jellica pretty is quirky in my head, it's hard to break out of it. <laughs> you know. Okay, let's do it then. If you intuitively feel, I got Jellica. I also like it a lot. I got Jellica on my mind. <laughs> so, and then we can also look at does it have um, pairings that we can use so on all of our family pages if you scroll down there should be hmm, not on all this one's too new this was added really recently but a lot of them do have um, pairing suggestions so you could go down not this one either. Okay, never mind. Um, we could use lighter weight of it to pair with the heading. That works a lot of the time. I activated the light and the light italic. We can see how those work. And then we can also look at rounded fonts that are a little more text friendly. Um, we can look at fonts with a large X height that are rounded, fonts that are a regular weight, and then we can find something that might, for example, New Zen. Let's see if this pairs. And then there's the whole font pairing episode. So you can check that out. We're, yes. We're getting pretty close to time. Yes. So I'm just going to do this real quick. So what happens if we turn this into Jellica light? Oh my lord. Today is Chris nice. says it's Greek week. Hi, Chris. Nice. <laughs> A fellow Greek. Okay. Let's look to see. Did the lightweight work? Yes. Oh, I so, like that. That does look nice. Let's see what happens with, what was it? New something. Was it new order? No. What did I just do? New Zen. Zen was one of our new vibes Zen. that we were looking for. How could we forget? I don't know. New Zen. Okay. So we have these two options for text that we can use as well. Um, I think the lightweight of Delica looks really good paired with it. Um, we could definitely spend more time looking through. Obviously, we've talked about going into rabbit holes. We could spend so much more time doing that. But we got to wrap up. <laughs> With this stream, we only have one minute left. So yes, we have to wrap up. We didn't finish the tutorial, but I think we talked a lot about our feelings. We did. We explored our important. feelings, which is what the whole point of the stream was about. So that's very good. <laughs> Everyone, if you wouldn't mind, if you're new here or old here or have ever been here before, check out the survey. Wade just posted the link in the chat. Uh, the survey is just four or five questions. Tells us a little bit about you tells us how you deal with fonts and things like that helps us learn a little bit about you. So if you like the show, if you like Adobe fonts, please fill out that survey. We're going to have it running for about a, a month or so. So do check that out. And then if you're new to the show or not new to the show, follow us on Behance at Adobe fonts. All our previous episodes are posted there and all new episodes will be posted there in the future. Thank you all for joining us once again. Ari, thank you for taking us through that lesson. And uh, yes, 
Yeah, great to see everybody. And let us know your feelings about fonts. Indeed. Uh, you can message us on Behance as well. So let us know there and we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye.